o'clock, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, if you could please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rob, are we live? Good. Okay. Okay, welcome tonight. Um, we've got some presentations, and our first presentation tonight is uh, from SEI and DGA. You guys ready to go? All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> so, uh, I know a few of you did walk it before, um, but I'm just going to run through this presentation to give you a, a better understanding about where we are with the project, what's been done, um, budget-wise, where we're at, uh, et cetera. And then I'll open it up to some questions. So, um, this is pretty much a typical uh, project budget uh, slide that you always see, um, but with an added new picture of that front entrance. Um, it's pretty destroyed right now, but um, <laughs> doing some concrete work and start some steel work there next week. This, you know, again, just shows you where the contracts came in, what we had uh, agency-wise, uh, et cetera, but this is the, the typical budget. Jumping to this one, this is um, some information. Um, continuing, we don't have any, have had no incidents on this project. Um, we've had no issues um, quality, uh, for quality. And then dropping the cost, you can see as of uh, the month of March, there was just over nine million billed uh, for the whole project for all the contractors. Um, and then there's a new revised, as of the end of March, um, contract amount just under 13 million on some of the changes we've been implementing. On the bottom, you can see the change orders. That's as of uh, yesterday when I redid our, uh, my issue log that has all the changes for the construction. Um, and so now, uh, it's been a little funky because this number down here has been shown as a negative because of all the backwardness we went in the beginning with all the BE items, getting some money back in our contingency. Uh, we've now surpassed and we're dipping into that contingency now that we started with, it was 279,000. Uh, and that is because we just brought the changes for that alternate 10 bathroom that we're starting across from the main office. Um, so we're right where we want to be. We have still $214,000 worth of contingency left. Um, and as of now, we've been starting the windows and we've had no issues with them. So it's a good thing that we can keep on contingency and get you guys some more work more things done in the, in the school as we get down to the end of the project. There is a significant demo too. Right. You know, we're, <clears throat> we've done a lot of the significant demo. The next major demolition item that we're going to deal with would be the opening up of the roof level and the changing out of the steel there. So a lot of the concerns were passed. We're in a good spot. So uh, this slide is just for an update. Um, obviously we're out of the elementary school, not quite out yet, but we're out right now um, with a few remaining major items over there we still have to replace the window in the nurse's office you do have to do all of the terrazzo work in that building um, and uh, the exterior work at both the entrances um, still has to get done this will all get done over the summer time jumping down to the middle school high school uh, area b uh, so those rooms at 118 and 120 we wrapped up um, a little while ago except for some minor uh, work mechanically uh, to get all the units working and jiving. Um, room 120 is actually fed from the main office, so we still have to make sure that's all running correctly. Uh, the main office, uh, those of you who saw it, we're in finish mode right now. There's some minor duct work we have to do. Ceiling goes in. Um, we've started painting. Um, flooring, will, flooring will be going in shortly as well. Uh, area C is this main entrance. Trenches uh, have been excavated, uh, concrete forms, concrete poured, piers, footing, or footers, I'm sorry, and then like Rich mentioned, uh, steel next week in that area. So we're moving swiftly along. And then windows is one of the bigger things that I'm sure everyone has been waiting to see. We started that in the 118 and 120. 
and we're moving our way down towards the main entrance around the district office, um, which some of those have boards on right now, around the, uh, the library. And then we'll be kind of jumping into a few locations around the building um, where it's not impacting any learning um, for the time being until the kids are at school. Then we can really start going at all the rest of the windows. That, that window change, once it's done, is going to be a environmentally transformative to every classroom. So each classroom is going to be benefited by that. <clears throat> Currently, most of your window systems are, you know, they've well outlived their, their life usefulness. Um, they're single, single pane, some of them, they're non-thermal broken. This system is going to bring in a much better environment. And they look better. <laughs> so, I just have a, a few slides of pictures for those who didn't get to walk the tour. Um, this first one are the uh, carriers that the plumber's installing for, now installed, um, for that alternate time in those toilet rooms. Uh, to the right, just a kind of a shot of uh, soccer rebuilding part of the wall that will be the main office with our uh, temporary wall right behind it. Uh, and here, this is right where um, the bottom left where the, uh, your secretary will sit uh, in the main office. You can kind of see down the hall. Um, for some finished walls that are that painted. And then this is just another doorway right up to the hallway, um, which will really be the main access from the hall into the main office. And I do have two more. Um, they're a little dated back to Friday, but you can kind of get a good view of the darkness and the, the color change in the windows um, that have been going. And up these, um, where the purple uh, insulation is now, have been replaced with actual glass, um, but it's just kind of with them working on Friday pictures of that. Is that install going well with the windows, like the frames and all that? It's going great. It's uh, they they are picking up their crews tomorrow, so we're just going to keep going as swiftly as possible. They have a great um, uh, couple steps with the way they're doing it. A good plan, um, pulling them out, boarding them up, uh, pulling the board down because uh, I think the the demo guys are taking them out. Well, the glass guys are putting them in, so it's a great system going right now. Um, and then when we jump into other parts of the building, there's a little more abatement that has to get done on some of the sets of windows, but it's we've had no issues so far. And then this is just another picture of the, the front of the building, um, the plastic coming down, and then where some of the concrete forms have been uh, put just in the front there. The front of the building is completely destroyed, so sign of progress. So if anyone has any additional questions, I can try to answer them the best I can from anybody. And that entrance way, I know we had a target date. Uh, we had to be done, but we could do the floors in time. Are we still looking good for schedule on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. The um, GCS, the RC, you know, they are, have not stressed enough that they want to have that time and some room for that terrazzo because that's a big area that we got to do the terrazzo. We want to have as much time as possible to do that. But we are right on track. Rich, this is uh, kind of off topic of this, but um, when this originally went out to vault, there was a sound system for the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the work orders that are coming in, I'm not seeing it present on that work order. And I'm not sure if that's something that went away that I can't remember. But I don't it's that, off the top of my head. I, I know, I'm, I, I'm not looking yeah. for a response in the next three minutes. But like, I, it, I'm just curious about what happened to that sound system. I have a conference call with uh, Jordan and Kyle in the morning. And when we're done, I'll make sure that item comes back to John. Okay, Th yeah, call. thanks. I, 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 I yeah. appreciate it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure that stayed in. I do not think we got rid of that. Because I was, just, you see, when you see, when you look at the <clears throat> the work orders that are lined up for the auditorium, you can see all the work that has been completed, um, from the stage to the rigging to the lighting to the catwalk and all that stuff. It's just it's, that line is not there any longer. Or I don't know if it was even there to begin with. It's not something that I've really. Um, it's a long sheet of uh, items there. I don't always look at every single one of them to be honest. If I find out in the next minute, I'll. Okay, clock is ticking, right? <laughs> first thing in the morning. <laughs> Thanks. You don't recall all the pain. I can't. No, I have no idea. So 
selfishly, I spend more time looking at the doors, the windows, the walls. So, yeah, so I'll get my interior. Yeah, you need those to be yeah. able to hold a sound system. Anything else, guys? For the tennis courts, John, did we install the windscreens? Is that? No, not yet. Not going. yet. We're waiting until the last minute before their first home match. We're afraid to put those, I mean, it's windy today. We're just afraid to put those up. So um, we'll make sure that, you know, when Mr. Carpino gets out there with his crew, that those courts are ready to go and they look, you know, tip top shape. Thanks so much. Thanks You're for welcome. being available. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, guys. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Up next, uh, Mr. Massey. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> spring and summer. Um, I don't know if you've been out there yet, but Buck Power has started their construction of their facility last fall, doing a lot of the airport. We uh, hopefully in the next 30 to 60 days will start uh, roughly $100 million worth of infrastructure construction. Um, so there'll be uh, on-site water main extended, um, there'll be a sanitary tank installed, uh, as well as rebuilding a portion of Crosby Road from Stamp Drive south uh, to the plug site. Um, We'll be working on installing our force main, uh, which will do a direct discharge into Old Orchard Creek. Uh, the on-site power line that's there that currently bisects the site will be rerouted, and a uh, 345 kV to 115 kV substation will be constructed up at the north end where the large 345 uh, mega power lines are. Uh, part of that reroute will carry a circuit from that substation around and then run down to the plug site. So Plug was at the Alabama Planning Board Monday night, got uh, their building permit uh, approval uh, with a few conditions. So they'll be starting to do footers here soon and start moving forward with that. And so we'll, we'll see a lot of activity out there construction-wise this summer, um, uh, probably into next year as well on that. Um, we also see uh, a lot of projects. Uh, there's probably four or five right now um, that are very, very active. Uh, one is a semiconductor company, uh, about 1,300 jobs. Um, they would take roughly 200 acres. Um, they have said that we are the top site that they are looking at, uh, but right now they are waiting on federal legislation. I don't know if you've been aware about what's been going on with the Federal CHIPS Act or um, some whatever other names they've, they've been calling it. So a lot of the <coughs> large uh, semiconductor companies, some of the renewable energy companies are waiting on that legislation. Um, to be uh, go through uh, the negotiating phase and then uh, we'll start issuing RFPs hopefully before the end of the year where companies can apply for funding. Uh, that will have a significant impact on when that company would make their decision. So uh, we also have um, a very large, about 3,500 jobs, uh, which is a, a battery cell uh, company. So a lot of what we're seeing are all renewable energy based. Uh, obviously New York State has some pretty aggressive goals as it relates to renewable energy. 70% by like 2030 or 2040. Uh, so uh, New York State's gotten a lot of attention from renewable energy companies, um, specifically solar cell manufacturers, solar panel manufacturers, um, and also uh, battery storage. Uh, obviously, uh, plug power is a hydrogen fuel cell company. Um, so those types of companies are extremely interested. Uh, one of the main reasons is the hydropower uh, that comes to the stamp where they can take green power and turn it into green energy. That's a big, a big thing for them. So a lot of companies are socially conscious of their uh, carbon footprint and are trying to minimize that to the best extent possible. So having hydropower is a huge uh, resource for us to be able to do that. Uh, we do have a, also a semiconductor uh, R&D center. That's about 700 jobs that's looking, um, as well as a solar panel manufacturer that's about 4,100 jobs. Um, obviously not all of these 
can fit at the stamp site. Um, more than likely, one of those large ones uh, would take the main campus, the, the 400 acres on the north end. Uh, we also have another developer that's looking at doing possibly up to three buildings on the southern end of the site, uh, which would be geared more towards light manufacturing. So um, that one can be there along with the large one up at the north end of the site. So uh, most of our large infrastructure uh, has been completely designed, uh, engineered, and permitted, um, and we are just awaiting a, a company uh, to be able to pull the trigger on the construction. Uh, in the most recent New York State budget, uh, there's a shovel-ready development fund there um, that is geared towards, uh, basically there's three mega sites in New York State. Uh, Luther Forest, which is pretty well full. There's the Marcy Center, which just landed uh, Cree uh, Semiconductor Manufacturing. There's one being developed in Syracuse on our site. Uh, it's a, I think it landed at about $200 million in the uh, shovel-ready fund uh, to supply funding for infrastructure for mega sites, so sites like ours. So there is funding there uh, that's available to us uh, once we secure a tenant to be able to construct that infrastructure. So um, we're seeing a lot of activity. Uh, we're really excited. There'll be a lot of construction going on out there this year. Uh, we're looking forward to it. And I would, uh, if anybody wants a tour, hopefully when it's not snowing, um, love to meet some people out there, walk around the site, show you some maps. It's it's one thing to see a 400-acre parcel on a map. It's another to actually look at a 400-acre parcel. And I can tell you that every company that we've brought out, um, when they look at the map, yeah, 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 when you take them out to the site and they see how big 400 acres really is or 600 acres really is, that really has a change on them as well. So be more than happy to, to meet anybody out there and, and give you guys a tour of the site and, and show you on a map what we got going on and where everything's going to be. And, uh, depending upon uh, where Plug Power is at, I'm sure it gets you to their facility as well. What's the timeline for Plug Power to be running? So, uh, obviously, there's supply chain issues with a lot of things um, in the country right now. I think they will have their facility pretty well done by the end of the year. The big holdup may be the large transformers uh, that we need for the substation that would power the facility. So, my best guess is probably very early next year. Um, they'll be up and running and uh, producing. Is water availability from the county an issue or something? Not for them. So we have enough for them. Um, anybody else that comes in, uh, we can get 6 million gallons per day from Niagara County. Um, that's been designed, engineered, and permitted. Uh, we would need funding from the state to do that. But most of these large companies are looking for 3, 4 million gallons per day. So we can get 6 MGD from Niagara County. So Genesee County has a franchise, or Monroe County Water Authority has a franchise agreement with Genesee County. Uh, as part of that agreement, Monroe County did carve out stamp. So we are able to go to a non-Monroe County water source. Uh, in this particular case, it's Niagara County Water District. So we do have water available for the large county. There was a semiconductor plant that just, I think, now it's Ohio, they were gonna build one. Yep. Were we in the running for that at all at one point? Or? We don't usually comment on whether things are active or not, but we have had two or three different uh, semiconductors looking at our site. Um, a lot of what we noticed with some of those was um, they were looking to do monster, like they're talking 20, 30 billion gallons per day of water, um, 8, 10 fabs, um, kind of more than what we could uh, provide at this site. Um, but initially, but some of the smaller ones, we're talking with, but we have we we've had a lot of conversations with a lot. Jobs, Mark. I can't remember what power uh, what power was. Uh, sixty eight. Sixty eight jobs. So thirty jobs on site, and then thirty eight jobs. Thirty jobs on site, and then thirty eight jobs would be truckers, okay. truck drivers. But they were looking, uh, I think, seventy thousand uh, dollars annually for their truck drivers what they were putting in there, and I think all you needed was a CDL license. So um, Plug Power also has a manufacturing facility that they've completed up in Rochester. So that facility is making what's called the electrolyzers. So the electrolyzers is what they utilize where they take the water and they split the hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So uh, and then they basically cryogenically freeze the hydrogen to make it into a liquid fuel cell. So the Rochester facility will produce the electrolyzers that will be used in the facility here. And that's so around, just a back and forth then, basically. Well, they'll right. produce them, and then they'll come here and stay here. And then if they need to replace them, they'll get more 
from that facility. And I think that was around 200 jobs. I think they just made another major announcement uh, of a large facility in the Albany area somewhere too. So they're, they're rapidly growing. Did they just put that plant there or how long has that been there in Rochester? Uh, they, they started the renovation of that building. I think it's in Eastman Business Park. Yeah. Maybe a year and a half ago. Well, this is encouraging. Yeah, it's like, like we broke the seal here. Right? <laughs> Finally, once that uh, that substation's a big uh, that's a big thing to get that done. Uh, and and Club Power is actually fronting the money on that to construct that. So that's uh, that's a huge win for us. And then because uh, that basically cuts you know 18 months out of a time frame uh, for a company, and that supplies huge power. It's a 500 megawatt station. Plug is going to use just over 200 megawatts. So there's there's plenty of just more enticing, right? Oh, Let's absolutely. Say, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then once you see stuff on the site too, that that helps with a lot of companies. And some of them you got to try and get them to picture it. But once you start seeing activity on the site and the power line gets moved and the road redone, and that it's 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 a big deal uh, to a lot of companies to see that kind of activity on site. And so, you know, well, it's exciting. It is very much. So it's going to be a busy summer. So. What should Again, we anticipate for a pilot on some of those projects? Is it too early to start talking pilot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hard to tell. We'll start spending the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <In anticipation of. laughs> Hard to tell, um, but obviously all of those uh, yes. all of those deals are going to be competitive with other states, and, and we'll have to be competitive with that as well. But um, it's 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 hard to tell. Um, it'll vary. Some of them might only be a couple million square feet facility. Some may be more than that. Um, some may have clean rooms, which could be assessed at you know five hundred bucks a square foot. Um, down to office space, which could be 40 bucks a square foot. So it's really going to come down to the breakout of the facility and what the different uses are, because each of the uses will have a different assessed value per square foot. So it, it's hard to tell. Looking forward to that part. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. We all yeah, are. So, yeah. yeah. So again, yeah, um, anybody, anytime, let me know. I'll be happy to meet you out there. I don't. Know. I'm going to stay away from quorum issues. I don't want you guys holding a board meeting out there while we're walking around the field. But uh, I'd be happy to set up multiple tours for you guys and, and take you around and show you around out there. I'm going to take you up on that. I Absolutely. That. Yeah. And Sonny and Haiti, give me a call yeah. in the morning. We'll do it. <laughs> I love showing off dirt. I, just, I love doing it. So it's better than looking at a map. That, so. Field trip. Yeah. Okay. you got to bring your own lunch and permission slips from your parents. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Okay, up next, Mr. Steller and Mrs. Miller. All right. Are you ready to go, guys? Yeah, I think so. All right. All right. <laughs> you guys can use the remote that's up there. Go backwards, forwards. Got it. Um, so good evening. We're not talking about plug power. Uh, but I will tell you that when everybody came in this morning, they looked at those windows and it went down the hallway. Like everybody was talking about the two new rooms that got windows today, which is basically around your area. Yeah, they were very, very excited. And then they were outside my window and I'm not slated till August. And I thought maybe if I like did something, they would put them in. <laughs> Bridges break one. I have like swords because I, so I'm Carrie Miller. I teach uh, in high school and I have pretend swords for Romeo and Juliet and the kids are always using them. I could just be, you know, accidentally break a window. Excellent idea. Yeah. I like it. All right. So today we're going to talk to you about the OA mentoring program, which you approved as a board about two years ago. So this is our second full year. Um, last year was kind of a slump because of COVID. But we did get a lot accomplished last year, and so we're going to tell you uh, what we've done over the last two years. You ready? Oh, you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't see it. So, in a nutshell, our the importance of our program, we want new teachers and staff members to come in here and feel supported, and um, we we start over the summer, and we meet with admin and we try to pair. Uh, teachers, new teachers with um, other educators here, seasoned educators, and we try to make sure that they fit really well. So this new person coming into this district um, has someone to rely on outside their own teams. And 
we really want to open up more lines of communication, and we'll talk about that as this goes on. But the big thing here is we want to ensure retention for the district. Um, Carrie has taught here 19 years? 19 years. Okay, so she's taught here 19 years. I graduated from here and very lucky to be back here as a teacher. And um, I take it personal when people leave our district. And I feel we have the best district. So our job, we both seasoned that teacher here. Um, and I'm from this area. We want people to stay here. So that's been our, our big push when we're developing this program. And I think we're doing a pretty good job with this yeah. as of right now. But it's gone smooth. And when and I'm, I'm glad everyone okayed it to split up into two positions, Carrie being up in high school and myself being in elementary. I remember Connie called and said, hey, we're thinking about splitting it. My first question, I can't lie to you, was who am I going to be working with? <laughs> and when they said it was Carrie, Carrie and I are really good friends, yeah. and she helped me a lot when I was teaching sixth grade over here. So um, we have a lot of the same values and beliefs in what we want to accomplish with this program. So it's been really easy. It's been fun. Stressful at times, but more fun. And I uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy what we've been creating with this. Yeah, Connie did a great job partnering us, for sure. We bring different strengths, so it's been great. But um, definitely that the retention and uh, with the great resignation that everyone has uh, been talking about in the press, right, and unfulfilled teaching jobs, um, we don't want to turn over what we already have. So talking about that, we have 16 new teachers that we support, and we have 16 mentors that um, they get one-on-one -on -one with once a month or more than that, just to give you an idea. So that's 32 members of your staff that are getting supported through this program. <coughs> Um, so we're going to we're going to play this for you. Um, this is a little bit about teaching. So you know we're pro teachers. Obviously, we're hoping this works. Um, but it's been a really really hard couple years for teachers. So we're going to give you a little idea of how hard it's been. This year has been a marathon for teachers. They faced constant changes and big challenges at every single turn. It's been hard to teach into the abyss of black screens and muted microphones or navigate the hybrid landscape with our attention split between students at home and students in person at the same time. Or the challenge of keeping students socially distanced with the constant reminders to keep their masks on. We miss the little things like fist bumps, and high fives and smiles on the students' faces when they have that aha moment. Teaching has been a marathon, but at the end of a marathon, there are different levels of tired. Some people are simply exhausted. They have crossed the finish line and they are placing their hands over their head with a mixture of gratitude that is over and a sense of pride over facing a huge challenge and succeeding. These teachers are worn out and they need rest. But other teachers are injured. These teachers have finished the marathon, but they're hurting right now. They have experienced genuine injustice and it has shaken them to the core. Many have faced trauma. These teachers need more than just rest. They need healing. I made this continuum for myself as a way to think through whether I'm actually tired or injured. This isn't scientific or research-based. It's just the tool I made for myself a few years ago and I thought I would share it. So here's how it works. In some cases, you need rest. Rest is a chance to recharge. Here you need a break, but you're also kind of ready to learn. So you might take a vacation, go on a few hikes, spend some time with friends, read a book, spend a day baking, or just binge watch your favorite TV shows. But you might also engage in professional learning and work on some planning for the next year. Next, there is recovery. Here you might need a longer break with deeper processing. You might still have a vacation and spend time on your hobbies, and you're definitely going to hang out with your loved ones. You might also engage in professional learning, but you need some time to reflect and journal or have coffee with a friend to process this past school year. You might need restoration. Here you recognize that something was taken from you this year, and you need to recover it. 
In this phase, you still need rest and you need to recharge with time off. But you might also need affirmation. You might reread old thank you notes from students or meet up with colleagues who remind you that you are a great teacher even if this school year was a dumpster fire. This might even be a chance to celebrate the fact that you get to be in the same space as your students. It's a chance to look forward to the things you've missed, like that Socratic seminar that you do, or those hands-on maker projects. Restoration is a chance to return to normal, but also a chance to redefine the new normal, and to advocate for changes in the system based on all of those things you learned this year. But in some cases, you might need rehabilitation. In this place, things feel truly broken. You are hurting and you need healing. You might need to talk to a professional counselor, and maybe even find a support group as you process the year and move toward health. It's important that we recognize where we are in this continuum and what we need, but it's also important that we recognize where our colleagues are as well. We all need the permission to be in our own place in the journey of rest and recovery after a really hard year. So we are that support group for our teachers, and it has been a really rough year. People are all over the place, but that would be an example of a video that we would bring to our teachers, and we have a Google Classroom where we would post that, and it helps them to know that we are the people that they can come to and talk to about wherever they are on that pendulum, wherever they are on that scale, and we're the people that are going to help them with um, recovery and affirmation and um, to help them to know what to do. Oh, this year has been a marathon for teachers. Sorry. They, Got it. All right, so for mentoring, we're going to talk about our communication as well as mentor mentees, um, how they communicate. First, they meet monthly. Um, the state requires that they meet for 60 minutes, and we base it off their own schedule, whatever works for them, and they fill out a document that will get handed to us at the end of the year so we know that they met that requirement. And though you meet during planning time, they might meet after school, before school, and meeting with, I know the mentees down at the elementary school, they've done a really nice job communicating schedules, which has been great, I'm sure the same with middle high school. Our Google Classroom, this is something different than we've done in years past, where we put up monthly topics, assignments, uh, where we give them quite a bit of time just to talk with each other, respond back, and you'll see a few examples in a minute here. Um, the handbook that we revamped, everyone gets a copy of that, and um, they follow that. And we also have the topics in there that they can talk about if there's something that um, maybe you know, they've hit a lull, but um, we kind of tailor it to them. Everyone's different, everyone has something new to talk about. And open door, they can go to either of us for anything. Um, I've had mentees and mentors stop by my classroom for a little advice, I know Carrie's um, went through the same thing, but we want to be there for them and direct them. And then we have Connie and Admin that we can go to if we have questions, right. which has uh, been awesome too. Now this says first year, uh, 19 years, 14 years. Yeah, we follow this too. Uh, we go through this. Uh, anticipation, survival, disillusionment, rejuvenation, reflection, anticipation. We really focused on these phases in our discussion posts where veteran teachers, support staff, and our mentees, where they fall in and how they can talk about that and how they can kind of change their perception. Um, talk about winter break here, disillusionment, and now we're back on our climb up to anticipation uh, towards the end of the year and things to look forward to big piece of reflection, reflecting on what's working, what's not working in our classrooms. So this has been a really big piece to our program. So this is our Google Classroom. So we, when we first got together, we had these great ideas that we're going to do breakfasts and after school and get together. You know, COVID didn't let any of that happen. And then 
we have a huge subsoil shortage, so there wasn't like real, you know, open time for us to get people together. And we wanted to have these discussions with our big groups, so we decided to create the Google Classroom. And this was something we would have done anyways, but it's really taken off. And we put talking points on the Google Classroom. I'm hoping this opens for us. Um, Ryan's really good at writing out talking points. Yes, yes, yes. Hit the drop down, because maybe you can sign in as yourself, use another account. Uh, you could do that. Only if you have your phone with you. Yeah, because of the computer. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. That's funny. Thank God you're here. mentor mentee hub and we present um, posts probably about once a month sometimes twice a month and we'll do topics um, Ryan just posted one this morning um, talking about that um, after Easter break anticipation to the end of the school year and then he does pointed um, thoughtful questions reflectory yeah so just a couple quick questions and you can even see here's our, our layout so you'll see in each month we have something due by the end of the month. Um, mentors, your only focus is this, mentors, mentees. We like for them to meet and then answer together too when we have discussions. Um, that way we're getting both of their thoughts. And it's awesome, the one we have like 23 to 24 responses and it's yeah. teachers going back and forth about certain topics that mean a lot to them and giving advice, which is fantastic. When it comes down here, we have 23 class comments. That means um, there was back and forth on that topic between the mentees and the mentors and us. And the nice part about this is that it's 100% confidential. And you know, people, I think on one of them I was just reading through because I had to look, and it, and I said, you know, it's okay that you're doubtful right now. It's all right that you don't feel okay right now. You know, you're okay to slow down your curriculum. Just stay to the standards and slow it down. If your kids are having a hard time, you're, you know, just that affirmation that they're okay. And that's what we're here for. Um, and so just that kind of confidential place to kind of dump and talk, um, which I'm sure all of us could use at some point, not just as teachers, right? So this has been, this has been real, really great. Yeah, let's see if I can get that. Nope. Aha. All right, so this wraps up uh, everything we've done for two years. Yeah, um, we have our handbook, and I know we did a hyperlink to that. Um, you guys approved this. We, we really took a lot of time to revamp this. And we feel that it targets our teachers and our staff members um, a lot better than the previous years. So, uh, like I said before, everyone has this copy, and they can refer to it as much as they want. And we have different checklists and things that they need to turn in within this document. Trainings, so we actually just had a training last month. We had a training yep. two weeks ago, and then our mentors yep. also had training so, two weeks ago. Well, where we went to BOCI, so we're getting training, um, mentors are getting trained, and the mentees, we're checking up on them as much as we can. Our materials, we have our Mentor Matters book, Everyone's getting a copy of this, um, the handbook, and then our mentor hub, which we showed you. And the big thing, family, um, and I kind of alluded to this to start off, retention. I want everyone to feel they're at home. Um, so Carrie and I try to come up with creative ideas, whether it's like a small treat, um, a gift around Christmas time, um, even just like a shout out, like you're doing great. You need to hear that sometimes because you don't always feel that. So we really try to have everyone feel the same way, just feel positive about teaching. And these last two years have been difficult, but uh, 
we're getting through it, and uh, I know we're doing a good job. And yeah, I, I'm hoping our program plays a big part in that. We say teaching because we're teachers, but they're also your new nurse also received mentoring at the elementary school by our nurse up here, which at the time needed to be done, especially in COVID year. Um, our school psychologist, long-term subs, they decided this year because we, we just had a lot going on to give them a little bit of extra support. So admin's really been looking out for the entire OA community to make sure that everybody's supported and, and really can help the kids in the community as best they can. That's it. How long do they stay teamed up? Is it just the first year or do they? So it's two years. Yeah, two years. Um, it's two years for all teachers, and then nurse, psychologist, um, speech pathologist, those are all one. Um, and then if the superintendent decides that they want to, he wants to extend a mentor-mentee relationship, he may see that somebody he wants to keep as a teacher but needs that little bit of extra time with somebody's support system, he can go ahead and ask for that person to stay with him for another year. Is this program available to long-term subs that are in the building, yeah. either building? Well, I, it, we'll talk to admin and kind of see like if we have someone for like two or three weeks, uh, basically their team would be sure. their mentors, but if we have someone beyond yeah, half a year. Like so a, covering a leave? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Kristen Crawford has Kristen Liker as her mentor. Right now. Gotcha. So she That's has great. someone to rely on. Yeah. However, Cindy Kowalik, she has not how does someone sign up to become a mentor it's a good question so um, in about the next six weeks they'll post the position as being open and then there's a, a application that they have to go through and it's basically just to make sure that they have the same skill set that we're looking for and then there is admin sits down, union sits down, we sit down, we look through those applications, and um, then we ask from that list for approval from you. And then once we get approval, then we get new hires, and then we pair them, so. And we've had a pool of, we've had a lot of people apply for it, so it's been kind of nice that people can choose if someone does come in as a long-term sub, uh, or you know, a new teacher comes along, we have someone. We really got it down to a nice system so that it works and then it doesn't, there's you know no favoritism, it's just it has like a system to it and if we stepped away, the machine would still work, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Well, I think that's what you have. You have developed an infrastructure that, you know, I'm not saying wasn't there, but maybe the, it wasn't there when I first came on the board. I did not see this kind of process, this type of organization. Um, when you look at that handbook, it really lays everything out for you. Um, like you said earlier, Ryan, this is mandated, but the OA way isn't. And you are the stewards of the OA right. way. And no state can, can, can enforce that. Only you can. Right. And when you're talking about 32 teachers that you're impacting, that's a substantial portion of our staff. And it's, it's very relevant what you're doing. And how you support them is, is, is really invaluable. When you first walk into a district, it's like coming into a, like a different world. Right. Uh, just doing attendance or uh, whatever, it's hard. And to have a, a mentor to be able to walk you through that and help you and you know, not be worried about asking a question that seems pretty trivial or stupid can be really relieving to have. And I, I think you guys are doing a great, great job. I, I, I'm, I love the, the training here that you guys are able to go through through policies. I, I guess I didn't realize that that even existed. Um, and that the mentees are able, like the mentors and you are able to go and yep. validate what you have in place and then improve on what you already have is pretty cool. They've made it um, so that the mentors have been going virtually and the last time they went it was four o'clock to or 3.30 to about 4.30. So our mentors were able to sign up for a May date or an April date, and she just went over questioning, like how do you question or how do you ask questions of your mentees, and they stayed on for like an hour. A lot of them drove home and went on and got on. Um, and it just helps to keep us nice and fresh. 
but this this does not happen in all school districts. It just right. it just doesn't. This is this is very nice to see here. Thank you. Any other questions? I think it's a great program, though, and <clears throat> as far as this day and age and the retention of new staff and the support that you have to continue to, to want to stay here, but you know, also within each other too, with the veteran teachers, you know, support one another. I mean, right. like I've been saying, the the last two years have been really not, you know, crazy. And yeah. So this is great. I think it's important, I, I like that you said that, because I love the fact that we're giving our new teachers support, but I love the fact that we're empowering the teachers that are already here, that have put in all that time and have all that experience. They need to know that they're valued beyond the classroom sometimes, and this is just a little way for them to get that. Keep this up, guys. This is, this is, this is great. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. All right, um, on to the approval of minutes. Uh, be it resolved that the minutes of the March 15, 2022 regular meeting and March 24, 2022 special meeting be approved. Can I get a motion? Second. Second? Yes. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, visitors request, none tonight. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cole. Uh, on to the approval of warrants, uh, be it resolved that after an audit of the bills, payment of the warrants and internal claims audit report for 317-2022 and 4-1-2022 be approved. Can I get a motion? Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay, treasures. Uh, and of a second reading here, John. Yeah, the second reading of that policy regarding um, uh, us keeping kids here at least till they're age 17 of the school year before um, leaving us if they feel the need. Um, the board didn't have any changes last month, so um, it's again up for approval or comments or edits. I liked it last month. I don't know anybody had any adjustments they were thinking needed to be made we'll make a motion to approve the uh, policy as written I would second. second that all in favor aye, aye. Aye. opposed motion passes thanks Matt so I just want to let the board know that um, the high school administration and myself will get this policy out to our school families um, just so they are aware of, of the change I am sure that there'll be uh, you know, positive feedback and along with that comes some negative feedback, but uh, we'll make sure that our community knows. Thanks. You got it. Uh, all right, Christine, I think you're up, lady. Okay, um, this is the uh, night that we present to you the property tax report card and the um, final appropriation uh, budget uh, that's gonna be sent it to our voters in May. Um, we've had, um, this is culmination of a lot of meetings coming up to date. I think we had a really good meeting, um, works, budget workshop in April, um, and uh, to, to finalize this. So tonight we're just gonna look at a budget glance, um, looking at the proposed expenditures by line and the same for revenues, and take a look at our tax levy, um, a brief overview of our district reserves, um, take a look at the property tax report card, and the, uh, talk about the budget here and budget for updates. So uh, this year's 22-23 proposed budget um, is for 23589606 which is a $2.2 .2 million increase or a 10.46% increase over the prior year. Uh, that increase um, in, in amount is significantly larger than the normal year because this is the first year that we take on some debt service for our capital project as we come to a close on that. But on the revenue side of that, when we get to that side, of, and we've talked about this, um, you'll see that that's um, offset by building aid and some debt service, um, use of our debt service reserve. 
Um, the proposed tax levy is an increase of 59586 to $5.4,76527, uh, which is a 1.1% increase. Again, a side-by-side -side look at our expenditures and, and revenues um, at the $23,589,606. Um, looking a little closer at the proposed expenditures, comparing to prior year, um, again, bottom line, the $2.2 million increase. Uh, you'll see the, the where in there, you'll see the significant increases, which is, again, in the debt service. Um, also, we are um, getting back on our bus purchase, uh, large bus purchase replacement plan. Uh, so that is a large increase um, as well that's driving that number. On the revenue side of that, um, state aid had an increase of $1.5 million from the prior year. Again, that's a, a significant portion of that is the building aid that's coming on for the first year of the um, finalization of the capital project. Um, we do have an increase in the pilot um, for the first year of the plug, pi plug power pilot. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on, the, on this, but again, you'll see that big increase in state aid. That's really what's driving driving that. That use of reserves, that's the debt service reserve. Yep, that money. is the debt service reserve. Um, that um, has been an accumulation of years of premiums on bonds that can only be used towards um, paying that pay down of debt service. So this is a year when we go out to ban. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go out to bond at the end of the year. This is a good time to pay down and not finance as much. So this is a good use of this reserve. Um, tax levy, I've, I've, uh, obviously you've seen this, uh, the, the chart showing uh, on the blue line is the tax cap amount and the yellow line is the uh, tax levy that we actually uh, went out with. Um, this year, our tax cap is at 1.97%. Um, we're proposing a tax uh, levy increase of 1.1%. And on the left, I have a history, um, what we've done over the years. That's the numbers that kind of go along with that chart. Um, but our average levy um, increase since 12-13 school year, which is when the tax cap legislation was implemented, has been at 0.97. So we're, we're pretty close to that same average that we've been, what we've been averaging. Um, projected tax rates, this is... Uh, based on the levy uh, being the 5.476527, um, with the 1.1%, which is the 1.1% increase, this shows what um, the tax rate was in 21-22, what it will be in 22-23, what the rate change is, and what the estimated annual bill will be on a $100,000 house, um, what the total annual increase is, and what that represents on a monthly basis. Um, thought that would, might be important to show. I know about anybody else I budget on a monthly basis, <laughs> um, what goes into my, um, my savings account to pay my tax bill at the end of the year, so um, what that impact would be. So $1.79 a month is what this is the impact. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else Okay. Okay. District reserves, and uh, this is another uh, look at this. I, I hand, this is basically the same handout I gave you at the budget workshop um, that shows uh, where we're at on those. Um, you know, you see a little slight in decrease from 20 to 21 school years. Um, that was when we used the debt, um, excuse me, the capital reserve towards the capital project, um, but it was mitigated a little bit in the next year when we were able to fund the, the new capital reserve. So. This is very small, and I don't expect you to be able to see this. <laughs> um, this is the property tax report card. It is in board docs. This is what you are doing to see. Um, very, very small. Um, I commend you if you can read this on the back. So you're welcome to look at board docs and zoom in on it. Um, and again, that's one of the two motions that you're obviously in, uh, in the uh, agenda tonight for you to approve is the total appropriations and that property tax report card. Um, the property tax report card has to be submitted 24 hours after approval by the board, so I'll have this submitted by tomorrow. 
uh, if it's approved tonight, but it, the latest it can be uh, submitted is April, April 25th. Um, our next meeting will and presentation on the budget will be at the budget, annual budget hearing on May 9th. That is a date change from May 10th um, at 6 p.m. And it's a Monday. Did I put Tuesday? Yeah. See, I did one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll fix that before we put it up on our, our website. I want to thank the board for their flexibility and just pushing that 24 hours ahead of time to that Monday. Thank you. And then uh, just some reminders of the date of our bud uh, budget vote is Tuesday, May 17th at, from 11 to 8 in the uh, community room it's in person. Uh, you'll, we're presenting to the voters on Proposition 1 is the uh, budget appropriations. Um, also, Proposition number 2 is approving a student ex officio uh, board member. And we have two open board seats up for um, election this year. We have two incumbents that turned in applications, um, Matt Lamp and Justin Stabell. Does anybody have any questions on the budget presentation? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, thanks again, Chris. Really, you spent your spring break really <laughs> <laughs> putting a lot together for us. Thank no, you. And it's not, and it's not over. It's like six months of the year. It's like giving birth to a child. Right yeah. Well, well it's appreciated. Dad, Thank you. Right? <laughs> 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 right. It's all over. Oh. Yep. Uh, okay, Jen. <laughs> no more baby talk. Yeah. Let's go. Over. Let's do something different. What'd you do for spring break, Jen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't have much. Did you give birth to baby um, numbers? <laughs> What's that? Did you give birth to baby numbers? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have much. Um, I did come back to um, meeting a gentleman out here at about 6:45 this morning because I was wanting to get back into the groove of things and you know check my emails um, and, and get moving and. You know, he basically said I needed access to the to the district office, and I said, "What for?" And he said, "Oh, you're the superintendent. We're taking out your windows." And by eight o'clock, it was actually snowing in my office. Um, the windows came down. They had yet boarded up, you know, the holes. And as I'm sitting there in kind of my convertible office, um, it started to rain snow. So that was a nice welcome back here in April to have it snowing in my office. So I took a picture of it. Send it to all the other superintendents. I said, I bet you it's not snowing in your office today. Um, so they got a good kick out of it. Uh, the weather is awful for our spring athletes and coaches. Um, they're just hanging on. Hopefully it'll turn soon. I know this weekend looks much nicer, but they're talking about another cool down uh, with some rain next week. So it's going to be one of those seasons where um, you're going to end up playing 24 games in 12 days. I, I can see it coming where we're just going to be squeezing games in, you know, two on Saturday and four on Sunday. So um, bear with us. Our buildings and grounds guys, they were working out last week. Um, we've had conversations with them. They are raring and ready to go. You will see that uh, you'll be approving an additional groundskeeper tonight. Um, and uh, they, you know, we're just, like I said, the weather today, tomorrow looks nice, although cold. And then Thursday, Friday looks like more rain. So um, it's, it's just not nice. Um, you know, I've had conversations with Jeff where I think it would really be feasible for them to switch the spring and fall fall sports. Because what are the kids doing over the summer anyway? They're playing, they're playing baseball, they're playing softball. Um, and when the ground is thawed and it does rain, the ground soaks it up. And right now, you, you could have, you could play football, you know, maybe soccer, you know, soccer. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there is, there's been some discussion and push about switching the fall and, and spring athlete or the spring sports, mm -hmm. and I tell you, I'm 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 all for it. Um, Jeff and I would vote yes on that if that ever came to to uh, a true vote. Um, I just want to welcome back everybody from break, and that our facilities committee will meet again this Thursday night at 6 p.m. to continue, you know, the great work that they're doing at planning our, our future. Um, you know, um, it's the OA 2030. And, uh, you know, we're going to dive really deep Thursday into looking at, you know, the projects and things that need to be addressed from our former BCS and where the facilities committee wants to take this district over the next two, three, five, seven years. So we're going to check um, out the elementary too, right? Yes, yes. We'll leave that to the end if, if we want to go down there. Um, 
Other than that, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add. Yep. Um, Friday, the 29th, we're going to do a wellness day in the elementary school. We're in the middle of our state testing. Um, coming back off COVID, our ELA testing, it was hard. The stamina of our kids was brutal. Our teachers just definitely need the day, too. So after math, we're all going to kind of play and have fun. Um, and the kids are going to be surprised. They don't really know much about it. So our teachers are currently planning that. And then budget vote, again, we're having our parent picnic. So I know Mary's been working with Christine on the prices for the lunches, and all that will be in my newsletter for May. Um, my goodness, this seems kind of strange. I've been doing a lot of paperwork lately for COSER 526, which is a partnership with BOCES. COSER stands for Combined Services. And this COSER is school improvement. And since I've been here, well, I was here six months until COVID hit. So we have not been able to utilize this service as much as I'd like to. And what we're able to do with some of these services is if we do professional development and we partner with a BOCES, they call it initiating events, we're like partnering together, we can get reimbursed for our substitute costs. We can get reimbursed in the summer for sending our teachers to professional development. We can get reimbursed for our mentors, our mentor stipends, it goes on and on and on. And there's not been much for me to do the last couple of years. And with Carla being new, she helps on the back end. We have some paperwork that's due at the end of May that she helps with. So we sat down today and I realized how much we've actually started doing again. Like our teachers are going to PEs and we've got our teams going and this, the mentor program is going up and running. And I, I almost get goosebumps thinking about it. it. It is a lot more paperwork, but it's a sign that we're really getting back to home. So that was exciting for me to really see it on paper that, yep, we're coming out of this thing. To say going back to normal, I um, covered for Lynn actually on Friday at her building right before break. So it was really cool to see the kids just having fun, the teachers having fun, um, getting to know the students and the teachers and interacting at that level with them, which, you know, starting in October, it was hit the ground running. But to have that fun interaction, they were watching Encano in the cafeteria, Mr. J wore a bunny suit, they were doing family feud. Um, so it was really cool to interact on that level with them instead of observations and evaluations and meetings and things like that. So that was an awesome opportunity. So thank you, Lynn, for trusting you. me. <laughs> you can't top Mr. J and bunny suit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll continue to on the grades that our students support this year. I presented back in October, I said I'd keep you abreast as to what's going on. So third market period just ended, our report card went out. And the trend that we've started uh, is continuing. I think we had an 86% reduction in failed courses in the first market period. That improved in the second market period to 92% reduced course, uh, failed courses. And in the third market period, we're at 93%. So um, just tremendous job by all our teachers who are utilizing the office hours and tutoring. Our kids are starting to get the message. So the trend is continuing. I'm super pleased about it. Um, I'll talk about the E-rate uh, uh, e ECF, as it's called, funding for Chromebooks. Um, great news, we just found out in the past two weeks that there will be a third round that we weren't even planning on applying for. We applied for round one, which got us $400 of free money, if you will, to buy a Chromebook for a child. Normally, a Chromebook's around $400. So instead of buying the student-grade Chromebook for the students, we're buying the teacher-grade Chromebook, the more premium level, like the one that's sitting right here. Larger screens, better processors, more RAM, so all the students will have the teacher grade computer, which means we didn't plan on having such a premium Chromebook for kids, but now we can do that thanks to this funding. That was with round one, which we did get approved for, which is 440 units. When round three came out, I thought, let's apply for it. So we're pending right now our application. We got our fingers crossed hoping they approve that. If they do, that is 420 Chromebooks that we'll be eligible for to receive $400 each. So it's almost like we're replacing for all 800 some students and all 120 or so staff within a two year period, which normally that would take about four or five years to do. So we're shortening the amount of time where we're getting new Chromebooks, which means better processors, more horsepower, you're just basically less waiting when you're using a device, um, which is a really phenomenal thing. So we got our fingers crossed that our application gets approved. Basically, you can only apply for the maximum number of students and teachers you have. So I looked at our entire K through 12 number, use that as an application quantity. And I looked at the number of staff that interface with students, so it doesn't count clerical people, and I used that number too. And I basically said, all those people right now are using devices that are not as good as they could be because they haven't been bought in the past year, two, or three. So 
if this works out, we will have really premium level Chromebooks all across the board, K through 12, staff included. Okay. And I got some good news from Genesee County Mental Health right before break. Um, they've done a great job of recruiting new talent and as interns out of local colleges, they've signed them on to work immediately following graduation and we're looking at staffing our satellite office starting in September again um, for the day and a half of the year, 24, or day and a half a week, 24 slots um, for mental health services through Genesee County. It's a huge, um, be a huge boost to completely round out our student support uh, facility. Connie, what's uh, what areas of professional development are you kind of zoom zooming in on here? Or if you, if um, well, with closer five to six, it's, it's basically anything, anything right? that's offered at Bosey's. The mentors, that's through there. Um, there's a lot of science and reading. There's social studies cohorts, math cohorts, ELA cohorts. There's yep, the science. We've actually been partnering with Monroe too to get some science PD for our teachers. Um, in particular, at the high school level, they're trying to develop some curriculum. The elementary level, it's more. It's curriculum based, but it's more on the new post, um, Postseason for Science kits that they have. And then um, there's a lot of general PD, like a teacher may want to like work on an instructional strategy. So I don't know if you guys use Frontline, but Frontline is a professional management, so teachers can go into Frontline and they can look at the whole catalog for GD BOCES to see what's offered. They can look at the whole catalog for Monroe 2 BOCES to see what's offered. And so they really have the option of choosing anything they want, and then depending on their building, it would go to Matt or Lynn to look and say, is this an appropriate professional offering for them to be going to? Because I guess that's what I'm wondering is, 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 so if a teacher comes to you and says, hey, this is what's offered on Frontline, then? Yep, it goes to the building principal. I get an email saying that I have a request. You look through, make sure that it fits the budget and everything kind of checks off the list or um, Connie has frontline set up where it goes off the board goals and yeah. our building goals, so everything is goal oriented. Um, there's been a big push for the SEL and making sure we're, we're talking about the social emotional learning. Um, so I think we'll see that trend for next year. Um, we also are able to use the COSER 526 for sub reimbursement. So if our teachers in my building take a half day and they're talking about their assessment blueprints um, and kind of revamping some of those units of studies, those um, subs are also covered. Because that's really been bad. Right, yeah. for the list. Yeah. So the other neat thing too, and it's not just BOCES offerings. So sometimes there's something, I mean these teachers, they're involved in their professional organizations. It might not be something that comes through BOCES. So if they want to do professional learning that's not in a catalog, there's a form that they go through and submit, and the same process happens. It goes to the principals and then they approve it from there. Cool, thanks. Okay, new business. Uh, we have 8.1, CSC placements and amendments. Be it resolved that the attached listing of CSC placements and amendments be approved. Can I get a motion? Second. Uh, second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, 8.2, GV Bosey's budget vote. Um, be it resolved that the 2022-2023 BOCES administrative budget be approved in the amount of $3,027,366. Can I get a motion? So moved. Uh, second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. Good call, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good call, by the way. Yeah, good catch there. Yeah, yeah, you were in the minutes of the other agenda. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right, so um, you might have to set me straight on this next one, Dan. Okay, so um, item 8.3, uh, Genesee Valley BOCES board member vote. Um, so um, these are incumbents that are, um, they're four incumber, incumber, incumbents, sorry. Um, that are seeking uh, re-election, and um, there's four open seats. So I'm pretty sure that we would. Right, they're, they're incumbents, they're just looking for your approval. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, 
I'm not going to butcher their names here. I don't, unless you'd really like me to. Uh, the I'm good, buddy. I'm good. Yeah. Are you okay? With yes. Yeah. You guys yeah. Can them as well as I can. Yeah. Can we okay. As as you can say. All right. Be it resolved <laughs> that the nominees of the Board of Cooperative Educational Services be elected as follows. And it looks like I am going to read these. Norbert Quest, <laughs> Roger Kostecki, Robert the Bruckier, Christy Crandall Bean. Um, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And be it noted that Dan uh, abstains from this vote as well. Okay. Uh, item 8.4, 2022-2023 Board of Education meeting dates. Be it resolved that the attached Board of Education meeting dates be approved for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, subject to change at the discretion of the board. Can I get a motion? So moved. So. Second. Yeah, it's not it. Second. He's got a finger in the pot. He's like playing Jeopardy over Let's go. Uh, I'll second. second. Okay. Yes. Um, any discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, motion uh, passed. Okay. Um, 8.6 property tax report card. Be it resolved that the Old Field Alabama Central School oh, Skip yeah, that. No, yeah, we this need that one. <laughs> from last year. Yeah, we probably need this one. Uh, <laughs> 8.5 2022-2023 district school budget. Uh, it's recommended that the Old Field Alabama Central School District Board of Education, upon the recommendation of John C. Fiscus. Superintendent of Schools does hereby approve the 2022-2023 budget in the amount of $23,589,606 to be presented to the residents of the Oakfield, Alabama Central School District on May 17, 2022 for vote. Um, can I get a motion? So moved. Uh, second? Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Now, 8.6. Uh, property tax report card. Be it resolved that the Oakfield, Alabama Central School District Board of Education approve the 2022-2023 real property tax report card as presented. A motion? So moved. Uh, second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, 8.7 budget vote volunteers. Be it resolved that the following voters be approved to assist at the annual budget vote. Uh, Linda Richter, Tim Richter, Ann Angle, Ed Angle, Sharon Cole, Peggy Lamb, Linda Bueller, William Bueller, and Barber. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> Barber. Thank you. William Barber and Barbara Barber. I think that's it. Can I get a motion? Thank you. So moved. Second? Second. Uh, um, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks. Okay, John. There's a lot of reading to do here, and I think we're probably going to be a better. Uh, so um, this is <laughs> this is a resolution for the board to um, approve an ex officio um, board member. That would allow the board um, and, the, and the district to have a student um, student on, on the Board of Education. And what I mean by that is that they would be part of discussions. Um, they would have a placeholder in the board agenda to present student activities. They would be part of the general public conversations. They are not privy to executive session. They're not privy to confidential information. Um, they are not allowed to vote. Basically, all of that is in there per education law, but it would allow at least a student voice, um, a student representative. Usually this person is a junior or senior. We would, as a district, if approved, would come up with an application process um, to find a suitable candidate, probably one that might be going into um, you know, business, marketing, media, you know, anything. Um, you know, I'd probably work with student government, you know, high school student council, and find someone interested, and um, the district would appoint somebody to start in July, um, you know, in the new year. But um, again, there's a lot of reading here, but that's, that's the ins and outs of it. Um, I think it's a very good look for our board and our district, and um, 
as small as it is, I think it would be great to have just a student representative on our board to be part of you know some of the discussions that we have. So I'll make a motion to adopt the proposition to present to the voters to add the ex officio non voting member. I will second that. Second. Uh, any discussion? No, I think it's a I think it's a neat opportunity. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Sure. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, proposition uh, passes here for voter approval. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, 8.9, a donation. And be it resolved that the following donation be approved. Um, it's a, I believe it's a clarinet from Ms. Santi, so um, can I get a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Uh, second? Second. Discussion? Thank you. Yeah, Aye. thanks very much. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay. Um, 8.10, uh, incident response plan. Uh, be it resolved, or be it approved that the uh, attached district incident response plan be approved. Uh, can I get a motion? So moved. Uh, second? Okay. Uh, any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay. Other than from the Green family, have we gotten any other communications? Uh, no. Okay, so um, we have received communications uh, by email from the Green uh, family uh, in regards to visitation at the elementary school, and we've responded accordingly based on some legal guidance. Um, move on to discussion roundtable. I don't think we have anything tonight for that. Uh, and then on to personnel. Be it resolved that items 11.2 through 11.8 be approved by a consent agenda. I apologize to the board for 11.8. That was a last minute, like 30 minutes before the board meeting. Um, just due to time um, and obviously vacation next week, um, we're asking for the approval of, of two modified track coaches, that being um, Courtney Kelly and uh, Matthew Johnson as co-modified track coaches, they will split the, the stipend at step one. Yeah, thanks for stepping up there uh, for those two. Mr. Johnson is currently He is the team. new special ed teacher up at the middle high school. Okay. That we hired this, this past year? This year, yep. right, yep. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, can, I, can I get a motion? So move. Yeah, uh, second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay. Yep, yep. Just trying to find it here. Okay, 11.9. We have a leave of absence here. Uh, be it resolved that the board acknowledges and approves a military leave of absence of William Snyder due to the deployment orders, or due to deployment orders. Um, can I get a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Thank you for your thank service. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Th yeah. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion passes. Okay. Be it resolved that the Board of Education will enter executive session at 719. Uh, regarding the employment of a particular employee and district litigation. Can I get a motion? So moved. Uh, second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, 